Chairman Cox, thanks very much for your time this evening. It's a pleasure to be with you again. So we are coming down to the wire here, and actually things are getting quite ugly out there. Uh, there is an, a new ad out um, from the Cuomo campaign, and uh, you make a cameo, actually. So I'd like to take a listen to that. Okay. Who can clean up Albany? Not the Paladino team. His campaign manager has a federal tax lien for not paying $53,000 in taxes. His senior advisor is under indictment for stealing over $1 million. Another top advisor was sentenced to jail for a hit and run DUI and has an open arrest warrant. The Republican chairman, Richard Nixon's son in law, a master of dirty tricks, leading one of the nastiest campaigns in the country. You can't clean up Albany with dirty hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's ludicrous. Uh, the fact, it, it shows how weak uh, the, uh, their, their attempt uh, to smear Paladino when in fact, uh, look, to use a man who's been out of office for 36 years, who's been dead for 16 years, in order to smear Carl Paladino is absolutely ludicrous. You know, uh, Andrew Cuomo was a self-styled sheriff of Albany. While this whole democratic culture of corruption, of which the AEG uh, pay for play is the latest example, uh, that he would try, and uh, here he's been the sheriff of Albany while all this has blossomed under his watch. He's has been asleep in the jailhouse, hat over his head, feet up on the desk while the crooks, <laughs> crooks are robbing the bank. Okay. I mean, come on. We're getting and we're getting awfully colorful in our in our rhetoric as we get closer to, to election day. I oh, see. Well, look, it, look, it's absolutely ludicrous uh, for for them to do that. He's trying to avoid the real issues that the people of New York State are concerned about, and that is we are the highest tax state in the United States. Okay. And if we're going to have jobs come back, we have to cut taxes. Okay, Chairman. Andrew Cuomo says he's just going to control the rate of spending chairman and when he's facing a large deficit that means that he's going to have to increase taxes okay That's chairman, what he's trying to avoid before before we get to the policy portion here which we definitely will do I just want to also read to you you know June O'Neill who's the former state chairman of the Democratic Party she's still a leader in the party said something she put out a statement that sort of reiterates the ad that we just saw there from the Cuomo campaign but she did say something interesting which is this the GOP is a far cry from the moderate Republican Party of Giuliani, Pataki, D'Amato, and Rockefeller. It has br been brought to its knees by Chairman Cox. Now, regardless of the rhetoric, it is true that you are having a guy at the top of your ticket who is unusually conservative. I mean, this is a man who says that he does not believe in abortion, even in cases of ra rape and incest. The, the social issues which people have focused on in New York City uh, are not the issues that even the people in New York City or the people upstate are concerned about. They're concerned about the fiscal issues. They are saving more and spending less in order to close their family budgets because unemployment, unemployment and underemployment at 17 percent and uh, the value of their homes has declined while their principal and mortgages have stayed the same and uh, yet the, the last four Democratic budgets, the Spitzer, Patterson, Shelley Silver budgets, everyone has increased spending, increased taxes, increased fees, while families in New York State are cutting their spending. But the That's reality right. is, though, People are that... concerned about that, and he is a fiscal conservative. He's a real fiscal conservative. Andrew Cuomo's not. But the reality, Cuomo... Chairman, excuse me just for one second, the reality is, though, regardless of whether or not people are focused on the social issues, those social issues are, in fact, out there. I mean, you're talking about a person, just today, the State Conservative Party has an ad out that talks about um, various different policies of Carl Paladino and talks about, um, you know, cutting the ranks of Medicaid, for example, and, cu and cutting taxes by 10% yeah. across the board. I mean, yeah. there yeah. are various yeah. different issues that are quite conservative. Do you not believe that your standard bearer, Carl Paladino, is more conservative than, say, George Pataki, who, who sat across from me actually just the other day and refused to endorse Carl Paladino. And, and we need to have conservative policies, fiscal policies here in New York State. You know, Chris Christie in New Jersey, who is in fact cutting spending and cutting taxes and will bring jobs back to New Jersey, he's also a social conservative. If you are a true fiscal conservative, you are often also a social conservative. 
Uh, Andrew but does Cuomo that fly in New York? I mean, New York is a Democrat-dominated state, for better or worse. I mean, this is a state where Democrats outnumber Republicans, and it took a guy like George Pataki, who started out actually quite conservative, but moved to the center, much to the chagrin of the, of the conservative party over time. I mean, can a guy like Carl Palladino really represent the state if, in fact, he was lucky enough to get elected? Uh, he's going to represent what the people of New York State wants, and that's they want a real fiscal conservative who's not going to increase taxes, but it's going to close the budget deficit that is facing the next elected governor of New York. It may be as high as $15 billion. Now, is the next governor going to close that deficit by raising taxes, as Andrew Cuomo will do, or is he going to do it by cutting spending? You can be sure that Carl, Carl Paladino is going to use the extraordinary powers that the governor has over the budget in order to cut spending and to close that fiscal deficit that way and then to also cut taxes and bring jobs back to New York. Chairman, you know, the, last, the, main issue. the Siena poll of last week showed Carl Palladino running somewhere in the neighborhood of 26 percent. You know, Pierre Rinfray got 22 percent of the vote in 1990. Do you think that Carl Palladino <laughs> will actually be able to get more? And what does that mean for the Republican Party well, in New York? You know, Liz, uh, the, that ad that you just played shows how desperate the Cuomo campaign is because the Rasmussen poll, which is probably one of the most accurate, showed Cuomo at 51 percent. If he drops below 50 percent, any pollster in this era will tell you that any incumbent, and he is an incumbent, he's considered that, he's part of the Democratic administration in Albany, any incumbent who's below 50 percent is in deep trouble. And they know because he's only 51 percent in the poll, he's in deep trouble. The undecideds go to the challenger, the out-of-office challenger. Uh, that's what happened in Westchester last year. It happened in Nassau County last year, where we won extraordinary upset elections. Also happened with Chris Christie in his election. That is what the Cuomo campaign's worried about. That's why they're putting out ludicrous ads trying to uh, put the issue of corruption, which they're responsible for, on Carl Palladino, which is impossible to do. And that's why they're, that's why they're, they're, they're running the kind of campaign that they, they are running. You know, there was this uh, story today in the New York Times. Andrew Cuomo sat for an interview with the New York Times, and he spoke of the need for public, uh, actually, he, he called out the public employee leader, uh, union leaders quite sharply, and spoke of them needing to come to the table, and sent them a book about Hugh Carey, about their need to partner with Governor to be part of the solution and not the problem. Is that not fiscally conservative enough for you? Oh, well, look, he's worked with them for years and they're all winking at each other. They're part of the special interest in Albany that has supplied the money that's, that, that, is, uh, that is fueling those ads. But when he was asked about, well, are you going to really cut spending or just control it? He refused to answer that question. He's just talking about controlling spending. He's not saying he's going to cut spending the way the people of New York want him, want the next governor to do in order to uh, cut taxes and bring jobs back to New York. Carl Palladino has been very specific about that. 20% cut in spending, 10% cut in taxes, and the highest tax state in the United States, that will bring jobs back, just like Chris Christie is doing in New Jersey. Well, we should note, Chris Christie is actually showing up in New York. He's going to help Dan Donovan, the Staten Island DA, raise money this evening. Um, at, but he has not endorsed Carl Palladino, by contrast. So we should just point that out, since we're talking so much about Chris Christie. The, the other issue here is that the Republicans don't have the same fundraising prowess because they're out of power in New York. Will the Republicans have enough money to get this message across. Your message is about AEG and corruption. I'm sure that's actually probably quite potent, but if you can't get anybody to hear it, then it's not going to have an impact. Uh, you've probably noted that Carl Palladino is up in the air with his ads. He's putting out very significant mailers at the moment. Uh, he's putting a substantial amount uh, uh, across the state to get his message across in the media and in mailers. Do you still believe that it was a smart idea for Rick Lazio to get out of the race? The, uh, well, of course, we needed to be unified, and uh, whether it was the Conservative Party, whether it was the chairman of the Republican Party, uh, uh, of the Republican National Committee, or myself, we all felt he should get out of the race, and I have to give credit 
to him. He did the right thing in getting out the race so we could unite behind a strong fiscal conservative as a Republican conservative candidate for governor. I know it's a little early for Monday morning quarterbacking because we just don't know, of course, and, and the general election hasn't come yet and it's right around the corner. But do you still feel that the way that things have gone up to this point, do you have any regrets at all about the way that you handled the governor's race? I mean, again, Carl Paladino was not your first choice or even your second choice. Well, look, I, I, that's looking back. Uh, we, I think we have to look forward. We're going to have a huge Republican turnout come November 2nd. We have had record turnouts around the country for the first time probably since the 1920s. Uh, four million more Republicans turned out in primaries across the country than Democrats. Here in New York State, we had a record turnout of almost 500,000 uh, re Republicans. And we're going to have that kind of turnout, not just because of the, the uh, statewide races, but with respect to the state Senate races, and particularly with respect to the congressional races. We could win, we have in play, let me put it that way, perhaps 10 or 11 Democratic seats that we could win here in New York yeah, State. Yeah, that's just amazing. And people are very upset nationally about what's going on, the arrogance of, of, of power that the Democrats control everything in Washington, the big government programs are doing. That's going to draw out an extraordinary Republican vote, and I just don't see that being matched on the Democratic side. You know, again, though, it is really amazing that you have that many seats in play in a state that's as, as Democrat-dominated as New York. And most of the money, however, to pay for the ads that we've been seeing is coming from outside the state, from independent committees and none of them are required to disclose their donors do you believe that those committees and this came up at the debate last night and I know you were in the audience that those committees should be disclosing their donors which of course would let us know who's paying for what in New York and elsewhere well look uh, the, the, there were been 527s on the Democratic side in the 08 races when the Democrats won those huge major, uh, majorities in both houses of Congress and the presidency, and they won the state Senate here. Sure, in, sure. In but New do you York. think that the donors should be transparent? Do you think the money, we should know where the money is coming in, from? It, in, in the end, yes, but these are the present rules, and we're both playing by them. They, of course, were much more aggressive in 2008, and they're very aggressive this year, too. It's the same rules for, for, for both parties. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much, Chairman Cox. We're going to be speaking